Man, thank y'all for being here. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and look at your neighbor. I like when y'all talk back to me. Yeah, look, look at your neighbor and say, God is here. God is there. God is everywhere. And you're at the right place at the right time. That's a lot, but I don't care. Amen. I don't care. It's, it's good. Yeah, you're at the right place at the right time. It always bothered me how come you've got to leave your church to experience God. It always bothered me. How come? Now listen, I love the Emmaus. I love, I love going to conferences and breakout sessions. I love them. I go to them. But if you don't get revival with your church, something's not right. You should, you should never have to leave your church to experience the Holy Ghost. He's right here right now. Somebody give him prayer. I ain't even preaching yet. It's good. It's good. It's good. I want to stay in the vein of the series we're preaching on called Unleash. Unleash. Everybody say, Unleash me, Jesus. Yeah. And the rest of you say, Unleash me, Jesus. Yeah. Unleash means to be released or become unrestrained. To be released or become completely unrestrained. Could y'all imagine, I, I say this to myself all the time. Could you imagine what your life, what your marriage, what this church would look like if we were 100% released and unrestrained? Do y'all hear me? Elkhorn, listen, as good as it is here, it gets better. We have not arrived. How many of y'all know we have not arrived we, how many of y'all know, we, it's not that we get more of God, it's that God gets more of us. That's what we got to get to. And I hear people say all the time, well, I want more of God. It's pretty simple, y'all ready? This is a deep theology right here. It's deep. Just give yourself more to Him. It's not that you have more of God, it's that God has more of you. Yeah, and you just won't find Him on Sunday if you live like hell on Monday. It's all right. Here I go, here I go. So listen, God did not die... For his church to be bound up, tied up, messed up. He, he didn't, he, he, he saved us to set us what? Free. Free. To free, to free us. So today I come on assignment. I really do. I got an assignment today and I'm going to hit the road running really hard, really fast, really quick. Um, but I come on an assignment straight from heaven to tell somebody here today, you are free. And I know that sounds so generic, so easy. You need a bumper sticker and say, I, I just got set free. You just, you're free. We are free. Y'all look at me. We are free in this church. We are not bound up by the devil. The devil has no authority. The only authority that, the, I feel the Holy Ghost. The only authority that you have, that the devil has in your life is what you give him. What you give him. And I serve the devil notice today. He showed up at the wrong church at the wrong time. Because God is here. Somebody say God is here. Yeah, yeah, God wants to set you free. Mary, Mary would say it like this. Take these shackles off my feet, so. That's Mary, Mary. Y'all want to hear Brian, Brian? I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Yes, yeah, so I want y'all to lean in and really listen. God is releasing. I felt this in my spirit. God is releasing, rebirthing, and rebuilding his church. This COVID stuff that we just come out of, y'all watch. The church is going to get stronger and greater and better than she's ever been. Somebody agree with me on that one right there. The devil messed up. The devil messed up. And how's he going to do it? I'm glad y'all asked. He's going to do it by the apostles. Uh-oh. He's going to do it by the prophets. Uh-oh, preacher. You said prophet in church. I sure did. Because God did. He's going to do it by the evangelists. He's going to do it by the pastors. And he's going to do it by the teachers. It's called the five Old ministry. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. That's how he's going to do it. Watch. How's he going to do it? Because that's the way he set it up to do it. So listen to me. Let me read you some scripture because today I'm going to mess somebody up. I studied hard on this one. It's going to shock y'all what I'm getting ready to say. Because some of you just, never mind. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. We've read this last week. I'm going to read it again because I've got to have a foundation to build a house. You gotta have, some of y'all are trying to build a house without a foundation. You gotta have a foundation to build upon. Listen to this Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11, NIV. So Christ, Christ, everybody say Christ, Christ. Himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, 
The pastors and the teachers. Christ did. Brian Rafferty didn't. Leadership didn't. Jesus Christ himself gave the local church a five-fold ministry. I've been in church, golly, in my mother's womb. And I've never heard a preacher preach on the five-fold ministry. Never. You know why? They're scared. They're scared how y'all are going to take it. And here's what I'm just saying. Study your Bible. Read your Bible. Rightly divide your Bible. And live on the Bible. Not on how your mama, how your daddy, how your grandma lived 50 years ago. I'm talking about we serve the same God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He's got a plan. He's got a plan. we got to study the Bible. That's why I love the Bible. Watch this. 1 Corinthians. It ain't just one verse. I hear this all the time. Well, people take one verse and make a doctrine. They do. But watch this. Here's a, here's a I guess the college teacher's coming out of me. But listen to me. Scripture must interpret Scripture. You hear me? So if you find one verse in that Bible and try to build a doctrine, a church, or a theology on it, watch this. It's got to have other Scripture to back it up. If not, it's just your opinion. So watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28. I'm reading now the ESV. And God himself, in fact, there goes to show you the Trinity is real. God himself has placed in the church, in the church, in the church. Are we the church? Yeah. All right. So he's talking to who? Talking to us. I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere. First of all, apostles. Second of all, prophets. Third, teachers. Then the gifts of healing. In the gifts of healing and administration and various kinds of tongues. Uh-oh, preacher. Let me read that again. Because I didn't write this. Jesus Christ did. So there's got to come a time in your life that you read the Bible, study the Bible, and here's the most valuable question you can ask as a student. God, teach me that. God, what are you saying in that? So watch, here's what he said. And God himself has placed the church, in the church, apostles, prophets, teachers, healing, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Various kinds of what? Now listen to me very carefully. Let me teach, and I promise you I'll preach here in just a moment. But I got to teach to your spirit really quick. God gave us nine gifts. Everybody say nine gifts. Nine gifts. To function in our daily lives. Every day, watch me. Every day you should be functioning in nine, one of the nine gifts. Every day. Every day of your life. You've got to be functioning in the gifts. He gave it to us. But praise God, it don't stop there. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. It don't stop there. God gave us also. I love this because God loves us so much. He gave us a five-fold gift of ministry to function in his local church. He gave us nine gifts to live out there. But he gave us five gifts to function in here. Now listen to me very carefully. God has anointed and set aside certain people. Whether you believe me or not, it's true. Not everybody's called to be an apostle. Not everybody's called to be a prophet. Not every, listen, it used to wear me out. I'd see pastors get up there and man, they'd play the piano and they'd have the music of ministry on their life. And like Joey Hicks, he, and he, he sings and he plays and, and stuff. And I'm like, I, I, I want that one. And then I'd see somebody else come out and play on the piano and just set the atmosphere like Beth Cochran and, and just, I mean, I'm, I'm talking to y'all. And, and y'all may not deal with this stuff, but I do. Listen, the most valuable lesson you can learn in your life, and I'm still learning this as your pastor, God made you to be you. God made you to be you. Watch this, you ready? Be you. If you can't sing, sit in the back. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny y'all y'all just look at me like I'm that's okay it's okay listen if you can't preach sit down if you can't teach get out of the way there, if you can't prophesy get up out of the way and quit telling false stuff it's true it's true but I'm here to declare I'm giving God praise today I declare the five-fold ministry back at Elkhorn Baptist Church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The gift is available and we got to start functioning in it. Got to start doing it. God set us aside. So why did God give the church the five-fold ministry? Why did God give Elkhorn Baptist Church the five-fold ministry? Here it is. It's so simple. We'll quit complicating it. If God were to take me home today, are y'all going to have church Sunday? You better, because if not, I'm going to say, God, let me have five by five seconds. 
If you ever build a church on a man, if you ever build a church on a gift, if you ever put all your faith in a leadership, they're going to let you down. But I know a name above all other names. At the name of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, that's where things shift. That's where things change. Ephesians 4.12. Let me back. Here it is. Why did God give the church? Why did God give Elkhorn a five-fold ministry? For the equipping of the saints. Woo, praise God. For the work of the ministry. And for, watch this, here's crazy. For the edifying of the body of Christ. If you have a pastor in front of you tying you to a whipping post and always down upon you, listen, it's not my job to be the convictor. I know the convictor. His name is the Holy Spirit. It is his job to convict you. If anybody is condemning you, watch this. I don't care if it's a pastor, a leader, a deacon, an elder, whoever it is. Watch, if they are condemning you, it is not of God. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict people. It's not our job. Our job, watch. Here, this is going to help y'all. Our job is to edify the body. Watch this. Give them hope. Give them hope. So let me go on. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm going somewhere. What, what is the five-fold ministry? I told you this last week. I'm going to run through it really quick. Everybody say the apostle. The rest of you say the apostle. the apostle. That's the first one out of five. God said the apostle. What does the apostle do? It governs the church. It governs the church. Let me go on. The prophet. Everybody say prophet. The prophet will get up and guide the church. He has a word. She has a word. They have a word. And that word is from God that would just tell us what our next steps should be. Where we are going. He's guiding us. He's leading us. And see, we got this all wrong. Y'all think it's my job to do all the work. Where have you read that in the Bible? Do the bulletins. Make all the visits. Make all the phone calls. Do it all. Thank God for 1940. Boy, that's about the 40th. You're the, it's when it come into play. The pastor does it all and everybody else sits back and judges. Watch. That's the pastor's job. No, that is our job. When we start working as the body, my finger cannot be my ear. My eye cannot be my feet. Every member of my body has a purpose. Every member here today has a purpose in Jesus Christ's name. And Elkhorn, watch me. It is time to be the New Testament church. Somebody say thank you. Oh, I'm going somewhere. The prophet, he guides the church. Number three, the evangelist gathers the church. A.W. <laughs> Tozer said, he said, Tozer, they said, how come everybody from the northeast, south, and west is coming to hear you preach? He said, here it is. God sets me on fire and the people come watch me burn. God set me on fire today. I got the spirit of an evangelist on me. I'm intentional. My eyes get big. My vein pops out. I use my hands. I don't want nobody to die and go to hell. I've got that spirit on me. How many of you already feel the Holy Ghost? I ain't even got nowhere yet. Yeah. Pastor, pastor. Everybody say pastor. He guards the church. He's a shepherd. He watches over the sheep. He watches over the sheep. You let the big bad wolf try to grab y'all. Y'all see your pastor get mad. I love the sheep. And you know, here's the deal. If you ever lose the smell of sheep on your life, you're not, you've lost your assignment. Never lose the smell of sheep on your life. Lastly, I'm going somewhere. Teacher. Everybody say teacher. A teacher grounds the church. Grounds the church. So they won't be tossed to and fro, back and forth. Every wind of doctrine comes around. Listen, just because it's got a title of a denomination over a church don't mean it's biblical. Don't mean it's biblical. Listen, you can be a Baptist all day and down and go to hell. You can be a Pentecostal. You sure can. Because God is not impressed by denominations. He is impressed by the denominator. Let me go. I got I to get busy. Listen to this. So why do we need, why do we need the five-fold ministry? Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Come on, don't, don't let the devil come in here. Listen, why, why do we need the five-fold ministry? To equip the saints for the work of the ministry and to edify the body of believers. Now, can I mess y'all up really quick? Y'all lean in. Let, let, everybody lean in. Listen to me. Y'all check this out. The word pastor. Everybody say pastor. 
I studied so hard on this. And Joy, I cannot believe what I'm getting ready to announce to y'all. This is, this is crazy. Watch this. The word pastor is used one time, one time, one time, one time in the New Testament. Everybody say one. What's well, this? <laughs> the word teacher is used 68 times in the Bible, New Testament. And out of those 68, 52 times Jesus Christ was called teacher. Oh, I'm going to mess y'all up. Watch this. The word evangelist is used three times. Three times in your Bible, in your New Testament, the word evangelist is only mentioned three times. Now watch this. The word prophet. Everybody say prophet. prophet. Is used 120 times in your Bible. I'm going somewhere. I'm going to teach y'all good today. Is that right if I preach and teach? 120 times in the Bible, New Testament. The word apostle is used 70 times in the New Testament. Now, let me go deeper. Can I go deeper with y'all? Are y'all with me? Somebody say, I'm with you. Because I know this is a lot of information. If you want my notes, I'll send them to you this afternoon. I'll give you my personal notes. Because I want to educate y'all. I want to teach the church. I want to help the body of Christ. I don't want us to just sit by back and say, kumbaya, and watch people die and go to hell. The prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, the teacher, the apostles got to be back in the church. It's got to be. And the reason why we're scared is because we don't know. My people perish because of the lack of knowledge. Knowledge. Knowledge equals power. Because it really don't matter if you believe me or not. It's in the Bible. So watch this. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. Let me go. Let me go deep. There were 25. I'm going to mess some people up. There were 25 named apostles in the New Testament. And one of them was a lady. Let me say it again. Because I'm at a Southern Baptist church. I didn't know that. 25 times in the Bible, the word apostle was named. One of those times it was named, there was a woman named Junus. Everybody say Junus. She was an apostle. An apostle. You say, Brian, I don't believe it. You got to read your Bibles. You got to read your Bibles. Let me go on. And there was only, watch this, only one evangelist. One evangelist in your New Testament that was named, and his name was Philip. Everybody say Philip. Philip was an evangelist. Y'all remember Philip in the Ethiopian on the road? And he said, he said uh, uh, man, I, you need Jesus. And he went back to Isaiah 53, and he talked about Isaiah 53 really quick. And then all of a sudden, he, got, he led him to the Lord, and he said these words. He was, an, he was an evangelist. He was on fire. It didn't matter. He didn't have to go to First Baptist or Frigidaire to baptize him. He came to the first water hole. And he said, what do I got to do to be baptized? And even the, the, the Ethiopian said, there's some water. There's some water. He got him off the chariot. He ducked him. And all of a sudden, gone. Gone. He was an evangelist. His name was Philip. And check this out. There were no named pastors, no named pastors in the New Testament. None. You can't find it. You find it, find it, find it. There were no named pastors in the New Testament. Now, it talks about pastor one time, but it didn't name him. It didn't name him. Y'all with me? Because I know this is more of a teaching than it is a preaching, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Listen to this. Nine named prophets. They named them. You're a prophet. You're a prophet. You're... Nine times in your Bible, you'll find somebody had the name to the title. Teacher was four times. In the New Testament. Watch this. So here's, here's my question that they were named. Isn't it interesting that the New Testament, listen to this, has no named pastors, no named pastors, <laughs> no named pastors, but in the 21st century church, everybody a pastor. I worked hard on this. People will introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Pastor Brian. Hi, I'm Pastor, Prophet, and Evangelist. I'm, I'm Steve. People, I'm trying to behave. People are more concerned in the 21st century about a title. If you have to enter, why don't you introduce yourself like he's high? I'm Brian Rafferty. I'm a child of the one true king. I know Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. You're going to have a hard time going to hell today. How about that? How about those words? If you've got, 
It ain't about a deacon. It ain't about an elder. It ain't about a pastor. It's about Jesus Christ. Oh, you look at me all you want to. It's about Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus and Jesus alone. Brian, settle down. I got an evangelist on me today. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost too. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. See, the local church, everybody say the local church. We're the local church. Now, if you're mad at me, you ain't reading your Bible. Because I've studied this. I've rightly divided this. Watch this. Woo. This side over has got something today, but it's good, too. I feel I'm drawn over there today. Yeah. So, yeah. so the local church. Everybody say local church. Local church. That's us. We, we're good with the pastor. We're good with the teacher. We're good with the evangelist. And they're talking about the least. But when it comes to an apostle or a prophet who's talked about the most, we squirm. We squirm. We talk about things that talked about the least were for. And God's sitting there going, Elkhorn's my church. I sent my son to die for her. And I put a gift in her. And she will never function the way I created her to be without my gift, her. So why do we talk, why do we accept, y'all help me. Why do we accept pastor, teacher, and evangelist and not apostle and prophet? The apostle and prophet destiny are talked about more than the pastor, the teacher, and the evangelist. But you let somebody get up and say, God called me to be an apostle. The first thing, listen, watch, I'm trying. The first thing that happens in your mind. <clears throat> yeah, we're good with the evangelist, though. We're good with Dr. Billy Graham. On, sure. What do you do with uh, Smith Wigglesworth? Yeah. Well, what, uh -huh. yeah, what do you do with them people that, that man, that's got the, the prophet? And they get up and they prophesy over your life and over the church. And watch this. Let me help y'all lean in just a minute. A prophet will give you good news. First Corinthians, I feel the Holy Ghost. First Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 3. That says when a prophet stands up in front of you, they will encourage you. They will give you good news. They won't tear you down because we serve a good news God. Listen, I'm going to ask y'all to hang with me. Hang with me. Hang with Because I'm going somewhere. I promise. Y'all with me? Somebody say, yeah, I'm with you. Because this, I'm fighting up here right now. I'm not going to lie to y'all. You know why I'm fighting? Because Satan does not want this word to get in your ear. Because if we become a New Testament, spirit-filled, water-walking, tongue-talking church, you talk about messing up South Central. I'm telling you, Taylor County Hospital will bring their patients out here, and we will pray over them, and they will get well. Go ahead. I don't care if you believe it or not. I'm telling you, we serve a God that can still walk on water. I'm... You ain't got to believe me or not. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. I'm going to explain it here in a minute. God downloads something in my spirit. I got to get in your spirit. Show me. How many of y'all feel the, it's hot up here? Turn some air on or something. Whew. Oh, God, I love you. God, I thank you for the word of God. So you know what this tells me? We're fine with the pastor. We're fine with the teacher. We're fine with the evangelist. But we're not fine with the apostle. And we're not fine with the prophet who's talked about more in the Bible than the pastor, the preacher, and the teacher. That tells me Satan knows if I can stop two gifts, you can have three, just give me two. If I can stop the apostle, if I can stop the prophet, you can have the pastor. Watch this. We got 131 churches in Taylor County. How's that working? If we, I hear this, Donnie, all the time. If we just get the right pastor, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to squash that. I'm going to squash that. Squash that. If you put your faith in this pastor, you're going to mess up royally. And it's going to be bigger than a royal burger at Druthers. I don't know where, I don't know where it comes from. <laughs> it's funny, though. See, I have fun. I don't want to be a big old pastor that weighs 400 pounds. That has to wear a suit that parts his hair over and wears brute. I don't want that. I want the Holy Ghost. 
I, I, want, I want to see the gifts back at Elkhorn Baptist Church. I want to see the signs of wonders and miracles. It's more than a chapter and a verse in your Bible. At some time in your life, either it's real or let's go home. I vote it's real. How many of y'all vote it's real? You may not understand it, but that's where you got to pray. Listen to me. James tells you this. Pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. God, I don't understand that. Guys, I, I'm just going to be honest with you. This time last year, I wasn't where I'm at today. I'm learning. Y'all be patient with me. I'm going to make tons of mistakes, but watch this. I will always, always, always try my best to teach you the truth of Jesus Christ and back it up by his scripture. That's all I can do. And sometime in your life, you got to quit being tossed to and fro. you got to study the word. So listen to this. Satan knows that if Elkhorn becomes a five-fold ministry church, <laughs> now that's going to make some of you uncomfortable. I don't know why, because if you're saved and you believe in Jesus Christ and you've read your Bible and you've studied your Bible, you should understand that the gifts, watch. Why do I have to preach on the gifts being back in the church when the gifts should already be in the church? They've never left, Drew. They've never left. And I'm going to give you the secret here in just a minute if y'all give me about, okay, 10 more minutes. 15. So watch this. I'm not praying for revival no more. I hear this all the time. I am not praying for revival no more. It's already, we already had a revival. Who, who said that, Lindsay? Yes, me. <laughs> me, I said that. I'm not praying for a great awakening no more. It's already been here. God said I'm going to do greater things than you've ever seen before. Is it real or is it a lie? i got to ask you this morning. I am the revival. I am the great awakening. I am, hallelujah. I can lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. I am the fresh wind. I, I am the fresh fire. And you are too. Somebody give God a big old praise in here today. It's here. It's here. It's here. You are the revival. Watch. You are the picture of heaven. You are the bucket of grace. You are. Watch. I'm going to tell y'all something. No other pastor will tell you. Quit praying for it and be it. Quit praying for something that God's already given you. Whew. Feel the Holy Ghost. Well, you're silly. No, you're silly. I'm tired of so-called Christians I'm telling y'all there's something in this church like I've never seen before. I believe that God is going to use Elkhorn Baptist Church to change South Central. I believe. Now listen, you can clap all you want. I'm asking you to become one of the five. See, that's where, well, go get them, preacher. No, help me. Help me. There was a man named Chuck. Bobby, what, what day was it? Tuesday? Tuesday? There was a man named, he's 72 71 years old. Everybody say 71. 71 years old, sitting on Bobby's front porch. I came over, and before we left, Chuck became a Christian, a child of God. 70, 71 years old. And I told him, I said, I will baptize you one day here at this church. So there's going to be a day. He may be here right now. No, I hope he is. I'm just telling you, watch. The church that you've got in your mind does not work. It's got to be biblical. It's got to be Bible. And you almost got to deprogram people to get them thinking right. We have been so programmed the last 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years. And I'm telling y'all in the name of Jesus Christ, his gifts are back. So watch this. I'm on more. Let me give you some, some scripture. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. Y'all with me? Say I'm with you. Man, I want to honor you. Romans 6, hold on. I had a woman prophesy on me. She said, take your watch off. So, y'all really up in trouble. <laughs> Romans chapter 12, verse 6 through 8. Um, we all, is it all? Okay, look. We all, everybody say all. all. He did not say some of you. Look, look at me. We all have different gifts. 
We all have different gifts according, this is so good, according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, this is New Testament again, then prophesy. In accordance with your what? Oh, it's, listen to me. Don't, don't miss that little F-A-I-T-H word there, faith. So you prophesy according to what? What you think? No, you prophesy according to your what? Everybody say faith. Everybody say faith. Then serve. If you serve, if it's serving, if it's serving, some people just like to be behind the scenes. They, like, they don't like no attention. Watch, it says this. Okay, just serve. I love God. He, I love, he, he speaks Kentucky too. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's to encourage, then give encouragement. If it's giving, watch, I'm going to say something. This, you're, you're not a giver to, to tell everybody I'm a giver. Do it in silence. Because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, and the Holy Ghost is speaking to me. Y'all got to listen to this. Matthew chapter 6 says, if you give and you've got to tell the world about it, that's your reward. He says, when you give, you give in silence. You, you do it that somebody else don't have to know that there's people like, well, I gave this one and I gave that one. Keep your own stuff then. If you've got to make an announcement, I, I done this and I done that and I done this and I done that. Watch this. It all becomes about you. I don't, I don't know where that comes from. Yeah, I do. Holy Ghost. He says, listen, if it's, if it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, then do it diligently. Watch this. If it's to show mercy, watch what it says. Do it cheerfully. Do it cheerfully. So here's the deal. We all have gifts. It's given to us, me and you, by grace. Everybody say grace. But watch this. Here's where it gets very interesting. I always ask the question, how come some people can lay hands on other people and they'll get up and recover and some people can pray and 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 pray and, pray and nothing ever happens? Have y'all ever asked God like that? I come, there is something called a gift. If you need praying for, watch me. I'm trying to help. Listen, trying to help y'all really good today. If you need prayer, don't go to some joker who prays once a week. You go to a praying man or a praying woman. When I was down and I didn't know where to go, I turned to my granny and I can still hear her voice and prophesying and praying over me today. Anointing my head with oil and speaking life and blessings over me. Preach it, granny. You go to people that's got the gifting. Y'all hear me? You go to the person who's got the gifting. You do not get on the phone and say, I'm going to tell all my friends about what's going on in my life. You are messing up. You are messing up. You go to the gift. Everybody say, go to the gift. Go to the gift. Go to the gift. Got to feel the Holy Ghost. There's one way that that gift is going to be activated according to the Bible. One. God did not complicate this. Y'all with me? Look, I got such a bad habit. I'm like, all I see is skin time. There's one way. Everybody say, one way to activate the gift. Faith. Y'all, listen, lean in. Faith. Everybody say faith. <laughs> so faith, listen to this. Faith activates the grace in your life to give you the power to do what God has called you to do. Put that on the big screens. I want them to write that, my note takers to get that. Faith. Faith. Everybody say faith. Faith, faith activates. They ain't got that one. Sorry. The grace in your life to give you power to do what God has called you to do. So here's what I want to do. This, this, there's a prop here. I told you there's a prop coming. There's a prop here. The Bible says that Jesus is like a fountain. We even sing the fountain deep and wide. Y'all know his old song? Deep and wide. Jesus is the fountain. Y'all look at me. The, the gift is the liquid love. The gift is the liquid love going through the fountain into our lives. But there's only one way. Watch, there's only one way to get it. You gotta have faith. George Michael says you gotta have faith, the faith, the faith. Who gotta have faith, the faith, the faith. That's my sermon. You gotta have faith. Watch this. So what if I told you, Jimmy, this is where it gets crazy. How come some can lay hands on people and they recover and some don't? This, that, and then, number one, it's a gift. But number two, what if I told you your, your faith is recognized by the cup that you bring to the fountain? 
What size cup are you bringing to the fountain? Can I get down there where y'all are at? I want to get down there where y'all are at because I, I like Wednesday nights. I get down there with them. Boy, we get it. We do it good. So what size cup are you bringing to the fountain? Could it be the reason why Jesus Christ says some of you are being tossed to and fro, back and forth, every wind of doctrine. If somebody talks about you on Facebook, flatline. Could it be there's something called sippy, sippy cup faith. Everybody say sippy cup. Now listen, my grandson Walker, I stole this from him. He's in Prince Brian. Sippy cup. It's truth. The church is weak. We've got 131 churches in this town. And the reason why we got 131 churches in this town is because they got sippy cup. Faith. I'm gonna get blasted. Y'all, I don't care no more. It's truth. If something don't go their way, they leave. If they don't like it, the pastor <laughs> steps on the, I praise God for y'all. Y'all like that toe step and stuff. Y'all even say amen to that stuff. It's unreal. Unreal, man. Unreal. But we got too many sippy cup Christians. Grow up! Listen. You will never make it in this walk called Christianity living a sippy cup faith. God called us to split Red Seas. I need somebody to believe that. God said, well, even when the lions come after you, I'm in the lions in with you. Even when they turn up the heat, I'm the fourth person walking around in that furnace. You'll come out smelling good, but you can't have a sippy cup. Some of you, some of you, some of you have just a regular cup. You just a regular, you here on Sundays, maybe miss on Wednesdays. Everything's just ready. It's all right, baby girl. That's the Holy Ghost. Don't worry about it. Yeah. She feel bad. Yeah, um, I, I receive that. I receive that. Um, just a regular cup. Everything's just regular in your life. You're normal. You don't mind if I got the gifts or not. I'm just getting by life. I'm just a regular Christian. What about this one? This is a half gallon. I thought about this one, boy. I pack this with me every day. Well, I try to. I, God just... I, I try to fill it up with water, trying to drink more water. Half gallon, Johnny, half gallon. How many half on fire people do we have? You're, you're half in, you're half out. I told you. <laughs> I felt the Holy Ghost and I walked up on that stage. You, you're half in, you're half out. Aaron, don't do that. If God called you to be a pastor, be a pastor. Don't be wishy-washy, man. Answer your call. Preach the word of God. Lay hands upon the sick. Prophesy in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't be just a half little preacher. Get her done. <laughs> Get her done. Get her done. You're, you're half on fire. You're halfway clap. I see that. That's a golf clap. Don't go out there and play golf. That's a golf clap. I'm talking about if Jesus Christ saved your soul. You ain't going to hell. We, we should be the happiest people in the world. We shouldn't be going, oh, God, I thank you today. No, God saved my soul. I'm... But I got to ask you, 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 I got to ask you. Is this you? Because watch, if I went to the fountain, I said, um, God's called me to be a teacher. God says, whatever you bring to the fountain, I'm going to fill up. I'm going to fill it up. But if you're only working in half of your gift, is it really working? So let me go on. Are y'all with me? So I'm with you. So uh, this is a gallon. This is a gallon. You got all you want. It's more than you. <laughs> I'm good, Brian. I, I mean, I'm great. I tithe. I go to church. <laughs> Brian, I'm good. I've got all that Jesus stuff that I want. Hey, listen, there's people here right now. I heard it. Man, I'm good. You'll never see this big old boy down on the ground. You got all you want. It's bigger than you because I'm telling you, I tried to drink this one time and I gave it back to the owner. I'm like, God, you turn over and you slosh automatically. Yeah. 
Yeah, automatic. That's all. That's all. Right there it is. It's bigger than me. I don't. I don't even like this. So I'm asking, but, but, let, let me say, but, or is this you? Shall I feel the Holy Ghost? So Brian, what's the difference? Why can some do this, but then some just walk into favor, walk in the anointing. They got God on their life. God will open up door, open up door, open up door, open up door, open up door. There's favor upon their life. That they're walking around field. If your car is, if your light comes on like when Dana gets through driving it, I'm like, we're going to start prophesying or something. Oh, listen, listen, this is so funny. I was back there in the back and I said, man, me and Joey were talking about prophecy and this, that, and the other. I said, Dana's got that gift. <laughs> he looked at me, he said, she what? And I said, Dana got the gift of prophecy. When it's time to go to the store, she'll say, shopping. yeah, shopping. She'll say, God, God, God told me to get that. <laughs> she tried to find a parking spot. She said, God, thank you in the name of Jesus. I get to park up front. She got the gift of prophecy. No, y'all laugh. It's okay, y'all. See, you've been to a church all your life where if you move, if you laugh, if you show emotions, you feel, you feel God, people are looking at me. Let them look at you. Y'all want to see a true Christian? See, watch this. Here's what God just spoke to me. You don't become a disciple until you become a disciple maker. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You can say I'm a follower of Christ all your life. But you don't become a disciple until you become a disciple maker. What is a disciple maker? Boy, God, I didn't even have this in my notes on. This is good. So here's a disciple maker. You're full, you're full, you're full. Here's the church. You got somebody over here that made us having a hard time. You should be the disciple maker. That if they're going through something, I can give them what's inside of me. Yeah. And then watch this here. We got, we got Christian hoarders. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Christian hoarders. It's mine. It's my gift. And you're not getting my gift. But here's what God said. Here. Give it away. God bless you, Emily. May God show you signs, wonders, and miracles. May the fire of the Holy Ghost come back into your life. May you feel a fire in your bones today like never before. May he open up doors like never, ever before. May he send the right man in your life. May, hey! In Jesus' name. Whew, I feel that. That's your cup. And watch this. Here's what most Christians want to do. Can I have my cup back? See, I touched you. I can look in your eye. That's your cup. That's your water. If you drink that, you'll never thirst. You'll never thirst again. We're drinking from the wrong wells. We're drinking from the wrong wells. We have put our faith in pastor so much. You put your faith in church so much. You put your faith in man so much. And God says, I am the fountain. I am the one that gives the gifts. I am the one that puts liquid love into your life. I am the one that will open up doors for you. I am the one. But you got to give it to somebody else. Why is church is at a decline? Let me tell you why. Because they're using three of the five gifts. Praise him, you guys come. I'm finished. They're using... They're using three out of the five. Everybody say three out of the five. Three out of the five. I'm going to close with this. So I want you guys to go ahead and stand. I'm done. It's 1130. So I'm going to ask you. <clears throat> are you a sippy cup? Are you a regular cup? Are you a teacup? My the teacup short and sad. This is my hand, this is my spout. Are you just regular? Are you just, are you just here? Man, y'all just putting your time in? You mean to tell me this is all God's got for us? When God says, you're going to do greater things than what I did when I walked on this earth, he wrote that to us. 
He wrote that to us. Let me ask you, are you a half gallon? Are you half in, half out? Half sold out? Things don't go your way, you're out. If you, when good days, you're in. Katy Perry. <laughs> half filled up. Are you a gallon? You got all you want. See, I see a lot of people like that. I got all I want, Brian. I'm going to heaven. You sure? You sure? You sure? You sure? You sure? That 71 year old man on Bobby's front porch, he almost missed heaven by that much. That much. He looked up and he, he literally said the prayer himself. I didn't have to guide him. He said, God, save me. Save me, God. I believe in Jesus Christ. Save me. Save me. So sippy cup, regular cup, half gallon, half filled up. You a gallon Christian, you got all you want in my Or are you this right here, man? You're so filled up, you're giving it away. Giving it away. At work, I'm giving it away. At school, I'm giving it away. Ah, I'm giving it away. I'm giving it away. I'm giving it away. Whew. So where are you? Ephesians 4 pretty much said, Jesus said, you're being tossed to and fro, to and fro, back and forth, back and forth, carried by every wind of doctrine. You're hot one day, you're cold the next day. One day you're in, one day you're out. You're on milk, you're a sippy cup. But God said, here's what it said. God said, whatever you bring to the fountain, whatever you bring to the fountain determines the grace you get in return. That's what the Bible said. So God answered my question, how come some people Man, they can walk in the anointing. They can lay hands upon the sick. Man, they got a, they're like a bull in a china shop. They, they walk with authority. They don't pitter-patter around. Y'all wait till next Sunday. I got, I got a praise I'm going to tell y'all next Sunday. Y'all don't want to miss next Sunday. Well, I, got a, I got a praise. So let me ask you something. What cup are you this morning? Y'all be honest. Be honest with me. What, are you a sippy? Are you a regular? Are you a half, half filled up? Are you a gallon? You got all you want? Or are you here? Are you giving it away? Here's how I know you're becoming mature. Here's how, look. Here's how I know you're coming, becoming mature. You give it away. You just give it away. You give it away. You just, I, I, I've got so much of Jesus. I can't help it. He's in me. He's on me got to give it away so that's how you know so what size cup watch what size cup are you bringing to the fountain right now i'm calling y'all out what size cup are you bringing to this fountain some of you have a prayer you've been praying for 15 20 years i'm going to ask you what size cup of faith are you bringing to the fountain huh. could it be the reason some of you are struggling with your gifts and your callings and the fivefold ministry is because of the size of cup you're bringing to the fountain. What size cup are you going to bring to the fountain this morning? Some of you need a miracle. Some of you are in a struggle. Don't sit there. Come to the fountain. Come to the fountain. Come to the fountain. And God will meet you right here. And all you got to do is just say, God, I don't understand it all. But Lord... I want to be like that. I want to be so full of you, I'm giving you away. I'm helping people. I'm blessing people. I'm, I'm encouraging the body of Christ. And when you're doing that, y'all be honest. Most churches that y'all see, where are they? Come on. Most churches are right here. Right there. So why are we so hard on the apostle? Why are we so hard on the prophet? Why are we so hard when somebody prophesies? When God says, if you prophesy, prophesy. And he said, I'm giving you various tongues. Various tongues. We're going to get in that later. Various tongues. Not, not Kentucky tongue. Various tongues. Did y'all get the word today? Somebody give God praise and hear them. Amen. All right. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. It's your time. Where are you? Where are you? You got to square yourself up. Where are you at?
Where are you at? Where are you at? There's people in here right now, I just felt in my spirit that you holding a grudge. You're mad. You got unforgiveness in your life. Sippy, 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 sippy. I had people tell me not to preach this sermon. They did. Don't preach it, Brian. And I'm sitting there going, why? I'm tired of the sippy Christian when we've got all power, all authority. There's no devil in hell can stop my Jesus Christ. Somebody say amen to that. Time to grow up. So, we all singing. We all singing. Who? Hallelujah here below. Y'all know what hallelujah means, right? It means 10,000 praises. When you say hallelujah, what you're doing, hallelujah, you're praising God 10,000 times. Ten, when you just said, Rondo, hallelujah, 10,000 praises went up. Woo, there's going to be a lot of praises in here today. So in Jesus Christ's name, I love y'all with all my heart. I preach you truth wrapped in grace and wrapped in love. That you would not sit there, but you would move. That you would activate the faith in your life. Call things that are not as though they are. That Elkhorn will see greater things in the end than we did the former. We have not seen anything yet in this church, in this house, in this world, in this nation. There's going to be something greater than a revival, greater than an awakening. And I'm looking at her. I'm looking at him right now. But you got to want it. So in Jesus Christ's name, God bless your people. I preach the word that you gave me, God. I pray God would go from a sippy to an overflow. My cup runneth. My cup runneth. My cup runneth. That's where I pray and I proclaim to you today. Your cup runs over. In Jesus' name. Take us into the throne room.